Smoking Tobacco's coverage of the 2024 Premium Cigar Association Trade Show is brought to you by Drew Estate, the rebirth of cigars. What's going on, everybody? Matt Tobacco from SmokingTobacco.com, live at PCA 2024 with coverage brought to you by Drew Estate. I am at the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust booth with none other than the Lancero hater himself, <laughs> Steve Saka. So how close am I supposed to eat this thing? I see you have it like really like here. Am I supposed to like Howard go sell it? Or can I hold it down here? Or? That's a great question. I don't know. Well, this is, this is your thing. You guys should know how... A little bit, all right. Wherever's comfortable. I mean, you don't need a yeah. all the way in. Sometimes I don't realize how high I bring it up. Yeah. You know, I definitely didn't do this with it. Yeah. <laughs> that was all you. It's early. It's the first day. Stop. I know, I know, I know. You haven't really even gotten the booze in you yet. I just started. I should have. Because it officially hit noon. You saw me crack the bottle. I right? did. I, I saw it. It was noon, and I like. It's a fresh pour. Yeah, it was a fresh pour. I'll vouch for Steve. That was a fresh pour. I, sh- I feel like I should have waited. <laughs> A few more hours. Oh, get- it gets much more entertaining <laughs> as the day goes on. Yeah. But you're here. You made it. You're in the Every same year, booth. like clockwork. You brought some goodies with you. Yeah. Well, that's kind of the way it's supposed to work, right? Right, yeah. And, you know, and, and, and in your typical style, um, you brought some cool stuff. Everyone's already talking about it. I'll start with the Lancero collection first, yeah. obviously. But then we're going to talk about you have, you have multiple things here. I have a lot. You know, it's weird. I actually have very little... I have, like, a lot of different little things, you know what I mean? Right. There's, like, no big, like, major, like, whole brand launch or anything like that. So it's, like, little bite things here and there. Still interesting, though. Yeah, I hope so. You think people will buy it? I don't know. You know? Look, so, I, some, we'll, we'll sell it at the trade show whether they, whether they buy it or not. You, know, you never know. I mean, I know I'm supposed to say everything's going to be a home run, but... It, it, it is going to be what it is. It always is. I mean, ultimately, consumers get to decide what to support and what not to support. And it's my job to make cigars that I think they're going to like. And in the end, if they don't, then it's my job to stop making that and to make something that they would. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's all about you know reading your audience, yeah. listening to the feedback, and then sometimes you just have to do things your own way anyway. Well, I always do. I mean, we don't do anything feedback-wise, but... We do, obviously. I mean, we, we tailor the business. We tailor, look, we, we launch a SKUs. Uh, but in the end, if retailers decide that these are their four favorite sizes of a particular brand, then those are the four sizes that we don't go out of our way to get retailers to carry stuff that they we don't believe they're going to do well with. Because right. that's very, I mean, I, I think that's a big mistake that a lot of companies make is they try to force things into the market and uh, that only lasts for so long. In the end, something has to earn its keep on a retailer's show. It has to be something that consumers are going to buy on the regular, on the repeat basis. And look, it's better. The more of that that there is, the better it is for our partners. And it's even better for the consumer because that means that we, the more consistent you can be with making something, the better it becomes over time. If you're doing your job right, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, we have a lot of like this is and that's. It's our knickknack year. Knickknacks. Yeah. I'm gonna run with that when I write the story. Yeah. It's a knickknack year. DTT, the knickknack year. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're okay with that. I mean, you said it. Yeah. I, mean, well, I don't think it's the best branding message in the world, but but, it, but, but it's the reality. I mean, look, you're you're adding uh, an aromatic to Stillwell. Yeah. They were taking the wildly popular holiday 2022 blend. Great blend. And we're now making it a permanent part of the collection. Now, look, people loved it, and it sold out when it was holiday. It resold out again when we repeated holiday in July. Uh, now that they can get it on the shelf all the time, maybe it isn't as sexy. Who knows? We'll see. But for the people that really enjoyed the holiday 2022 blend, they now will be able to buy it whenever they want to buy it. And, you know, they won't have to rush out and, oh, I got to buy four boxes because there won't be more of it. So, so you got that, you know, in, uh, in Sin Compromiso. Uh, the lines never had a Robusto, which is crazy. Right. I mean, yeah. Well, what happened was when I first was making the Sin blend, uh, I was never happy with the Robusto. So it was one of these things where I wasn't happy with the way the size and the blend was working. And we launched the brand and my intent was, okay, I'll fix the problem with the Robusto and then next year I'll add it. Well, that was what? Since 2018, 
and I like finally getting around to like, oh, let me fix this and make a robusto for Sincompromiso smokers. So that gets added. Um, you know, in Sobra Mesa, it's probably one of the more exciting things because the Wagashi blend is a little bit of a different blend. So yeah. where you have like the blue blend that's on the, so the blue blend's slightly stronger than the regular boule. The Wagashi's slightly milder than the regular one. It's a okay. more, it's a more refined, a more delicate, more nuanced kind of thing. So, cause like, you know, so like for the regular brule smoker, I know the blue is the one that gets all the online love, but that's because most, a lot of the smoke blue aren't typically Connecticut shade smokers. They just happen to really like the blue. Right. Right. Whereas for most of the brulee people that are like mild or Connecticut shade smokers, they would rather smoke the regular brulee, the Doros and the Robustos. So the Wagashi now gives them something that can, for them to step up. But if you love the blue, you might find the Wagashi a little underwhelming for your palate. Maybe a little too delicate, a little too nuanced. Again, we'll ultimately see, but that is actually a, a uniquely different blend that's been added to the portfolio. Um, we're adding, uh, what else we got? You discontinued one of the sizes in Sober Mesa, right? Um, not in Brulee. So no. In, uh, so when we first started the company, Sober Mesa had eight sizes in it. So I've been wanting to repackage it to Salida. Okay. Um, so when we redid the packaging, because I wanted to make it the same cigars in the box, because Brulee, I mean, Sober Mesa originally got released with 25 count boxes, but Brulee has 13. So I wanted to make the, the Sun Growns have the same box configuration. So while doing that, I'm like, I also wanted to give it a little bit more of a tagline, because when you just had Sober Mesa, it was easy. But now when you have Sober Mesa Brulee, how do you describe the other Sober Mesa, the old one? Yeah. It's not very attractive when you no. talk about it that way. And it's not fair to the cigar because it's a really it good cigar. It lowers the excitement level. Oh, right. yeah, the old one. So and it makes it even hard for us to discuss it, you know, with our customers and with consumers. So by calling it Salita, okay, you now have Sobre Mesa Brulee, which is the mild Connecticut shade version. And you now have Sobre Mesa Salita, which is the traditional, original blend that has the Ecuadorian sun grown, a fuller bodied experience. So when we did that, we also said, okay, we don't longer need eight sizes. Because you have brulee, you have blue, you have Ogashi. So we condensed the Salita line to just the four most popular sizes for the retailers. So, and we do that everywhere. We do that, uh, we did that with Umbagog. We took Umbagog that used to be like, Umbagog used to have like eight sizes in it. Reduced it down to four. We're adding one this year, the bronze back. So also part of it is not because something stops selling, but it doesn't sell as much as the other. And you can't just let the portfolio get out of control because the retailer only has so much shelf space. Right. And what ends up happening, you see it all the time, Matt. You you see these companies that all of a sudden a year, they put out an announcement that they're discontinuing 140 SKUs, 150 things. You know, like you could buy it yesterday and now it's gone, right? Yeah. And I just think that's bad brand product management. I think it's much better to prune and adjust as you go along, do it nice and smooth. Same thing when companies do like packaging changes. They like, they wanna sell all the old packaging, so they'll like do some really super cheap, cheap discounted sale to some big box guy, but that screws all their retail partners that have it on their shelf, right? That paid the regular price for it. And now they can be, so whenever we make these transitions, we do them very slow, very gently. I'm, I'm not in the hurry for the money. You know, look, there's no reason to be in a hurry. We're, we're, we're not in nuclear weapons here, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cigars. So Salida, so there's gonna be four sizes. Regretfully in the Salida, one of my favorite sizes, Cervantes Vino, got the ax, but. Sometimes that happens. But, I'll bring it back. I have a slightly adjusted blend on that cigar that I actually like a little better, okay? And what we will do, just like we have a Sober Mesa Brulee Blue, yep. we will have a Sober Mesa Salita something, okay? It's actually, I already know, it's Salita Red, okay? Oh, there you go. Yeah, so, but Salita Red. we're not offering it now. I don't even know when we're gonna offer it. Okay, cigar is done, but I don't know when we're gonna fit it in, but we'll do that. So. A lot of these things are just little nibbles around the edges to make. And also, too, it's um, 
some of it's also changing the way we call things because for many years like the only people that were smoking Dunbarton were like really in the know kind of geek consumers really so, cults following yeah and now it's grown to a much broader audience so the Toro being called the El Americano is confusing so you notice in Brulee when I launched Brulee it was Sober Mesa Brulee Toro Sober Mesa Brulee Robusto we did the same thing with Salida when we made the change the El Americano becomes the Salida Toro again just to make it easier smoother same cigar some people will say it's different because that's just human nature but it isn't it's just us trying to make it make a little more sense. I don't think that those kind of things are exciting for consumers, but they are stuff that makes it easier for our retail partners, and it is something that makes it easier for the people that aren't familiar with the brand. You know, what yeah. else we got? We got uh, oh the Lanceros. Oh yeah. Oh wait, let's do the one. We got Umbagog Bronze back. So I talked about how we trim the yeah. Umbagog down. But we're adding bronze back, 5x48. Um, it uses a, what we call a 2LS wrapper. So on a Connecticut broadleaf plant, they don't do it by primings because it's stock cut. Yep. The sections of the plant get different determinations. Everything from about the midway point up is what we call mediums. At the very top of the plant, we would call those number one darks, but not always because it depends on the texture. So you'll have years where the crop will give you no number one darks, and some years you'll get three or four leaves at the top that we would classify as a number one dark. But almost all the Connecticut broadleaf handmade cigars use mediums and up. Okay, on the higher end, the better end of the spectrum. Okay. The two LSs are down beneath it. It sometimes gets really dark, like these bronze backs we have here are dark. Sometimes they're more of a little bit more of a ruddy, uh, lighter brown color. Okay, it just depends on how they come out of Pallone. So what most manufacturers do with the two LSs is they actually take that tobacco and they cook it in a caldera to get it super dark. And they use it on their really inexpensive uh, broadleaf cigars. So when you see these broadleaf cigars that you're getting you know, in bundles for four and five dollars, that's almost always cooked broadleaf. It's two LS that they cook. The problem is when you cook it, the color ends up beautiful, but it sucks all the flavor out of it. And one of the things that's nice about the 2LS is it's kind of a different expression of broadleaf. It's a little spicier. It's a little more peppery. It's less sweet. It's less chocolatey. It's less earthy as a traditional broadleaf. But it has its own unique flavor profile that's a little leaner, a little racier, a little more peppery. And there used to be a brand back in the late 80s and in the 90s that used to use this 2LS wrapper naturally. However it looked, it looked. Okay, they didn't cook it to try to make it look pretty, and it had that 2LS flavor. So, I don't think anyone's making 2LSs, so it was one of those things I like, you know what, let's put it on one cigar, let's put it out there, let's see, what, let's see what people think of it. Yeah. I, I love it, but we'll see. So, so we have the Umbagog Bronze back, and we made it in a 5x48, because I think the consumer that's going to appreciate the most is probably the more experienced cigar smoker. You know, more than the average Joe. Yeah. Um, so, and just so they don't get confused in their humidor, we changed the band. So the bronze backs, the band actually has bronze on it. So you can identify the, the bronze back, the 2LS blends, compared to the standard uh, medium dark blends on the on the Umbagog. And then we have uh, we have the Good For You Lancero collection. Yeah. Good For You, that's what it stands yeah. for? GFY. Yeah? Yeah. GFY. Yeah, GFY. We, GFY. Yeah. GFY is a very Steve Sockers team. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's a weird look. This is, one of the be this is one of the nice things about being... I'm going to grab the box. Yeah. I, just I mean, this is one of the nice things about being a small family company. There's no board of directors. There's no shareholders. There's no, there's no marketing people. You can do these small, quirky, little stupid, slightly irreverent... You know, look, we take the cigars very seriously, but why not have a little fun too, right? And you can't do that when you're in these big companies anymore. I like Lanceros too, so I mean, I'm and I like your cigars, so I'm just happy to see that you made a nice little Lancero collection. I think this is great. I can't wait to smoke them all and see how they are. I know that mm. you could care less, yeah. <laughs> but I'm excited for this. Yeah, yeah. And look, it was just so perfect, like because you know, like Lancero geeks are always asking for Lanceros, and so. 
here you go. Here's a way to try 10 different Lanceros in a box. Yeah. You know, and the only, so, so the first one in the box is labeled Now Leave Me Hell Alone. Right. That is the Now Leave Me Hell Alone blend. Yeah. And then the next eight that are number two through nine, those are blends that I created when I was making the Now Leave Me Hell Alone. Okay. Because I made like 63 to 65 different blends, and I chose the one that I thought was the best that ultimately became the Now Leave Me Hell Alone. But along the way, there were some others that were quite good. So I just basically went back to all my blending notes, and I'm like, okay, let's remake these 15 or 16. Let me try them all again. And I just picked the best eight of them that I thought were like, okay, this is something that I think. And I also tried to mix it up. So they weren't deviations of the now leave me alone, you know. So there's like, I don't even know. So there's 10 blends, and I think there's six different wrappers in the box. Okay. Right? Yeah. I, I guess I should know that before I start talking on camera. Well, you have a Candela in there, yeah. too. And the Candela counts as one of them. And then for the 10th one, I'm like, okay, let's just make the absolute worst thing. What's the worst cigar in the world? Candela. What makes it even worse? Candela Lancero. Perfect. And we labeled that one GFY. Watch that one go on to become the one everyone wants. Human nature, man. <laughs> well, you know, Steve, it, it, it's exciting to come by the booth. I know you... you kind of calling it the the knickknack here but no you have some you ha, no you have some really cool stuff i think important stuff yeah. that's part of the dtt story as you continue to grow Plus the company two, look next year's our 10th anniversary i'm sure you have something you're and working on the other on. thing too is this trade show was four months earlier so i don't know what everybody else is doing but i just know that i couldn't do something there's no way i could have gotten something accomplished that I would have felt good about just to hit a trade show deadline. Yeah. You know what I mean? So these, like, Wagashi was planned a long time ago. We've been making Wagashi for a year and a half. Right. You know what I mean? We already made the holiday blend. The Lanceros were me going back to my blending notes. The only one I had to work on fresh was the Candela one. You know what I mean? So it was also just being pragmatic with what the schedule was rather than me just going, oh, I got this deadline. I got to have something big. I got to have something new. Yeah, you don't want to do that because that's not fair to your customers. No. Right. So, so that was the approach. And I'm not saying the people that do, maybe they were working on a year ahead. So I don't want to disparage other people. I just know what I can do and what I can't do. So right. I have to work with what I could do. So. Well, you do a great job at it, Steve. You make it look easy, but I know it's not. I, I know it's not. But, you know, it's exciting to sit down with you again at the show to talk about what you have what you're working on, what's to come. We're excited to meet up with you again next year. You mentioned you got your 10th yeah, anniversary yeah, coming next up. Next year's our 10th anniversary. So I'm sure that'll be a big year for you as well. So we can't wait to, can't wait to catch up with yeah, you. I might be dead by then. You never know. We, yeah. could be dead. We, we all could be dead tomorrow, yeah, right. you know? But we'll see. But Steve, thank you for being here with oh, us. Right. Thanks for talking to me. Thanks for sharing that with me um, and all of our viewers and listeners at home. And have a great show. Thank you. Guys, stay tuned for more coverage from PCA 2024 brought to you by Drew Estate. Take care.